Hey everyone, welcome to Cooking Companion TV. I'm Jenna Edwards and this is a recipe demo of Italian nachos. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. This is a copycat recipe of a dish at Terilli's in Dallas, Texas, where they have created and perfected this technique. I love the idea, so I tried my own way. Let's get right to it. Starting with the pizza dough. I bought pre-made pizza dough and just rolled it out onto a floured surface until it was an eighth of an inch thick or about three millimeters. I alternated between a rolling pin to push it out and my fingertips to feel out any bubbles and to flatten out the thicker edges. I also flipped it a few times so the bottom didn't stick to the surface. Using a pastry cutter, I then cut out squares and triangles in one to two bite sizes to fry up. Now I experimented with a few ways and pan frying the dough resulted in the flattest chips. I coated the bottom of a skillet with olive oil and heated it over medium heat, maybe medium high, until little bubbles surrounded a test piece of dough when I dropped it in the pan. Place in your dough pieces and let them cook for no more than one minute, maybe 45 seconds, until you see some browning on the edges, on the bottom edges. My oil could be a touch hotter, frankly. You always want little bubbles surrounding the edge. That indicates that the oil is creating a crust rather than the dough soaking up all the oil, which is gonna happen here anyway, because it's pizza dough. So you may need to add more oil to the pan later on, and you will get some bubbles rising in the dough. I cannot work out a way where that did not happen. It's, I think it's just the nature of pizza dough. When you remove them from the pan, place them on a wire rack lined with a paper towel just to soak up any excess oil. Also, you do not need to flip them in the pan. I did that for this batch, but I found it unnecessary. Pan frying allows the bottom to get crispy and create a stable foundation for the chips. You'll be adding toppings and then you'll be baking them just like tiny pizzas. And that heat will address the top part of the chip without overcooking the whole thing. Lay the chips on a baking sheet or even a cast iron pan and bake in the oven at 450 degrees or 230 Celsius for just five minutes to heat up the toppings and melt the cheese. Let's move on to the toppings. I made four different toppings and I'll walk you through each one. You can have all this started and going while you roll out the pizza dough and fry the chips so you can save some time. For the margarita nachos, I spooned on a thin layer of tomato sauce straight from the can, didn't do any other seasonings, and then pulled apart a small ball of mozzarella and sprinkled on grated Parmesan cheese. For the broccoli rob, I scooped pre-cooked chopped greens onto the chip and topped with a generous amount of Parmesan cheese. Now here's how I prepped the broccoli rob. It has a strong bitter flavor, which I love, and it can carry lots of garlic and spice and cheese. So I chopped the rob into small bits so it's easier to eat on the chip and boil the stalks in salted water for a few minutes until they were tender. Now the florets are pretty tender already, so I didn't include them in the step, although it's fine if you do. And I only used a few stalks, not the entire bunch. While it boiled, I sliced two large garlic cloves. And after I drained the rob, I dried out the pan and sauteed the garlic in a little olive oil and a pinch of crushed red pepper flakes. Do not skip that part. Once the garlic was soft, I added the broccoli rabe florets and then the boiled parts. Basically, you saute the garlic and pepper flakes with the greens to coat all the flavors together and cook it down. Rob stalks can be really tough and stringy, so we wanna make sure it's cooked until it's tender, which is just a few minutes at this point. Next was the chicken pesto and goat cheese. I smeared on a healthy layer of pre-made pesto and shredded poached chicken and dotted on crumbles of goat cheese. Now this is how I poached the chicken for maximum flavor and tenderness. First, I added aromatics to the poaching liquid to give it flavor. I used lemon peel, oregano, and a bay leaf to keep it Italian-ish. Now to keep poached meat from getting rubbery, heat the meat and water together rather than bringing the water to a boil and then adding in the meat. Now I've got a dedicated video on the best method for poaching chicken. So check out that video card. Now, as it comes to a boil, remove the foam and then turn off the heat and cover it, letting it sit for about five minutes. Now for thin chicken tenders like this, five minutes was a touch too long. 
but you can test doneness by pulling out a piece and pulling it apart with a couple of forks. As long as it's not pink in the middle, it's done. And then keep shredding it for the nachos or chicken salad or tacos or whatever. I only needed one tender for the nachos and the rest went into chicken salad. Then I did a basic mozzarella and pancetta by tearing up the mozzarella balls and dotting on three to four pieces of diced pancetta. You'll notice that nearly all of this is store-bought and pre-prepared. And I'll be able to use the leftovers in other dishes. And for kicks, I did a three cheese nacho without tomato sauce. So a smear of the goat cheese, another mozzarella ball, and a sprinkle of, of Parmesan. And that is it for this recipe demo of Italian nachos inspired by the, by the famous Torillis in Dallas, Texas. Get the ingredient list below or at cookingcompaniontv.com slash Italian nachos. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to this channel for more demos just like this. I'm Jenna Edwards and thanks for watching.